Bhagavate Vasudevaya
Aho. 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 Oh, all of you. Oh, all of you. Mama. Mama. Unto me. Unto me. Ami. Ami. All of them. All of them. Itaranti. Itaranti. Distributing. Anugraham. Anugraham. What means? Special mercy. Mercy. Hari. Hari. The Supreme Personality of Godhead. Gurum. The Supreme Spiritual Master. Yajyabhujam. All the demigods. Eligible to accept yajna offerings. Adishwaram, the Supreme Master. Swadharma, occupational duties. Yogena, by dint of. Yajanti, Worship. Mamata. Mamata. Having a relationship with me. Nirantaram. Incessantly. Shonitale. On the surface of the globe. Dritmabrata. With firm determination. Translation and purport by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Shiva Prabhupada. Translation The Supreme Personality of Godhead is the master and enjoyer of the results of all sacrifices. And He is the Supreme Spiritual Master as well. All of you citizens on the surface of the globe who have a relationship with me and are worshipping him by dint of your occupational duties are bestowing your mercy upon me. Therefore, O oh my citizens, I thank you. Shall we recite this together? Why not? The Supreme Personality of Godhead is the master and enjoyer of the results of all sacrifices. And he is the Supreme Spiritual Master as well. All of you citizens on the surface of the globe who have a relationship with me and are worshipping him by dint of your occupational duties are bestowing your mercy upon me. Therefore, O oh my citizens, I thank you. Herbert. Maharaj Pitu's advice to its citizens is to take to devotional service. No. Maharaj Pritu's advice to its citizens to take to devotional service is now concluded in two ways. He has repeatedly advised persons who are neophytes to engage themselves in devotional service according to the capacities of the different orders of social and spiritual life. But here he specifically thanks those already engaged in such devotional service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is actually the enjoyer of all sacrificial ceremonies, and who is also the Supreme Teacher as Antaryami or Paramatma. 
there is a specific mention of the word gurum, which indicates the Supreme Personality as Chaitya Guru. The Supreme Godhead in his Paramatma feature is present in everyone's heart. And he is always trying to induce the individual soul to surrender unto him and to engage in devotion service. Therefore, he is the original spiritual master. He manifests himself as spiritual master both internally and externally to help the conditioned soul both ways. Therefore, he has been mentioned here, herein as Guru. It appears, however, that in the time of Maharaj Prithu, all the people on the service of the globe were his subjects. Most of them, in fact, almost all of them, were engaged in devotional service. Therefore, he thanked them in a humble way for engaging in devotional service and thus bestowing their mercy upon him. In other words, in a state where the citizens and the head of state are engaged in devotional service unto the Supreme Personality of Godhead, they help one another and are mutually benefited. So in Shiva Prabhupada's purport to this verse, Oma Jnana Timarandasya Gnanjana Shalakaya Chakshura Mithitam Yena Tatsmai Shri Gurave Nama Shri Chaitanya Mano Vishnam Shabitam Yena Bhutale Svayam Rupa Kadamahyam Ganati Svapaganti Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadamara Shri Vastari Bhagavad Gita Krishna Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Vanchakapatra Yastha Kripa Sindhu Hare Vacha Patitana Pavane Gyo Vaishnave Gyo It is with some trepidation that I sit here with all of you exalted Vaishnavas and Vaishnavis present, so I beg your blessings that I may say something that will be enlivening and illuminating. Prithu Maharaj king of the earth he is giving instructions he has been teaching his subjects I sometimes wonder how he manages this without internet <laughs> perhaps uh, people's ability to listen was so much better than it is today in any case Somehow, he was able to communicate with his vast kingdom, his subjects. And as Srila Prabhupada says, this verse is coming to the conclusion of his instruction. And in this particular verse, he is expressing gratitude. Gratitude is the theme I want to focus on as we speak about uh, leadership, specifically spiritual leadership, I would suggest that gratitude is foundational to our individual, personal progress in spiritual life. And uh, it is also foundational collectively to our progress of, as the phrase we're uh, using, pushing on uh, this movement cooperatively. I was just uh, fortunate a few days ago to participate in uh, a smaller seminar called Leadership, uh, no, Spiritual Leadership 
seminar. Uh, and this is something that's been prepared over some, some years and has been uh, presented by our Anuttama Prabhu and our His Holiness Praladananda Swami very expertly and uh, how to say very inspiringly. So I want to share with you, uh, especially, well, I want to address all, all devotees, but especially those who are participating in this Iskhan Leadership Conference, a little bit of what I learned uh, in this seminar. We learned that there are uh, principles of leadership which are useful to keep in mind as we uh, practice leadership. There are 12 of these which uh, have been uh, divided into three categories and I'm not going to go through all of these but the three categories I think are interesting. The first of these is vision. So Prithu Maharaj is giving vision to his followers, to the citizens of the world. He's especially emphasizing uh, Varnashrama Dharma, but interestingly in this verse it says Svadharma Yogena, uh, and more than one commentator explains that Svadharma in this context means uh, Bhakti, that by Bhakti they are uh, offering Yajanti worship. Vision is what we receive from ultimately the Supreme Personality of Godhead and the Acharyas in the line of the Sifat succession. For this vision we are grateful. Uh, some months ago I had the good fortune to get some new glasses from uh, an optician who is a devotee uh, and he took me uh, to his office and uh, put me through the eye examinations and I've had this done you know, so many times before in so many years as my eyesight gradually you know, dwindles as, as the body dwindles. Uh, but this optician spent a very long time examining my eyes. I don't know how long it was, it seemed like at least an hour. With lots of different machines and, and most importantly, very careful questioning. I reflected on this, uh, this exercise after getting the glasses. These are the glasses. They're the best glasses I ever had. They're fantastic glasses. <laughs> I can really see sharply. It's so nice. So in the examination process, he's putting on different, you know, tests, uh, lenses, and asking, can you see clearly now? Can you, is this better? Is this worse? So there is a back and forth uh, exchange. Similarly, the spiritual master asks us, inquires how we are doing and what is it that we need so that we can get the necessary adjustments so that we can engage nicely in devotional service. Well, this gets a little bit ahead of what I want to say. Um, so I'm, I'm going to back up before I get to that point of facilitation. The next, first is vision. And then when we have vision, which may need some adjustment, we may need to sometimes ask ourselves, 
Am I getting the vision sharply? Is it in sharp focus? Circumstances change. Our experiences change. Our needs uh, change over time. And as a result, the vision could get a little blurry. Or we might lose it altogether. And so we need to keep coming back to check. Am I getting the vision? And when we have the vision, then we can experience the next principle, and that is inspiration. Inspiration has the uh, acharyas of our uh, spiritual leadership seminar have worked out four subcategories, one of which is being balanced and exemplary in one's lifestyle. The word balance, I was discussing with some devotees last night, makes me think of trapeze artists. Not trapeze, sorry. Um, tightrope, yes, tightrope. So when you walk, any, do we have any tightrope artists here? <clears throat> but you have seen tightrope tight rope artists, what do they do? How do they walk the tightrope? Ah, they have a long rod. And what does this rod do? It helps to balance, right? So what is the rod in our case, in this analogy? What is our rod for balancing on this tightrope of material existence? Sadhana, okay. Mahamantra. Mahamantra, which is part of sadhana, right? Instructions, right? Sadhu Sangha, which is part of sadhana. Good habits. Sorry? Good habits. Good habits, yes. Guru. Guru, all of the above. Yes, all that you have said. Uh, these, this is the balancing rod. So we need to balance ourselves, to keep ourselves balanced as we progress, as we go along in our spiritual lives as leaders so that we can uh, imbibe others with inspiration. So that first of all we can be inspired and so that we can give inspiration to others. Now, when someone has become inspired, they say, yes, I've got a vision. Yes, I have inspiration. Now what do I do? The third principle is facilitation. And as Anuttama Prabhu pointed out, the word facilitation comes from, in French, uh, the word facile. What means facile? Easy. Easy, yes. So to facilitate is to make it easy. Srila Prabhupada, how many times he said, this process is so easy. Simply chant Hare Krishna, what is the difficulty? And we want to say, Prabhupada, there is so much difficulty. <laughs> if you only knew. <laughs> but actually, from the position of clear vision, then there is no difficulty because one understands how to facilitate the practice and the leading of Krishna Consciousness. And part of uh, the practice of facilitation is re uh, being reflective and being self-aware. Stepping back and thinking, reflecting for oneself. And this means being self-critical. Now, I don't know about you, 
but I am a card-carrying member of the fault-finding club. <laughs> Actually, I'm an honorary member, <laughs> I'm embarrassed to say. <laughs> but I am trying to learn to overcome this habit. And one thing I find, one thing I find is that if I am self-critical, then there's no more steam left to be critical of others. <laughs> because there's plenty of work for me to do on myself. So this is part of facilitation. And you may wonder, well, how do these two relate? It's about humility. Isn't it? Uh, we facilitate for ourselves the chanting of Hare Krishna purely so that we enable others to do the same. Mm -hmm. But there's another dimension to this self-critique. And that is what I would call collective self-critique. And I would suggest this is one of the things that we do when we come together, especially in this uh, Sangha, uh, the leadership Sangha. We look at ourselves. We, we, we give a hard look at ourselves, a critical look at ourselves, collectively. And we see, how are we doing? How can we improve? Where are we going? Are we following the vision? And if not, how do we correct ourselves so that we are indeed following the condition of uh, uh, the vision? Srila Prabhupada told us that the perfection of the vision is to see Krishna face to face. And we can see that Srila Prabhupada was seeing Krishna face to face. I was so fortunate to be present when Srila Prabhupada made his last visit to uh, have the darshan of Sri Sri Radha London Ishvara. Uh, in 1977. Uh, he was preparing to leave the world uh, and this was very clear. He was in Bhaktivedanta Manor but he wanted to uh, go to have darshan of Radha Vandanishwari. And some of us found out that Prabhupada was going so we jumped in cars and went in to see and it was just so touching because Srila Prabhupada had all the time that he had stayed in uh, the manor whenever we would see him because uh, his eyes had become uh, very sensitive to light. He was keeping on dark glasses. But when he went to, uh, to Soho, Temp Soho Street Temple in London, uh, he came in. Very place. Was it still very, very place? Very place. Okay. In very place. Thank you. Uh, when he came to very place, he came in the temple, and he took off his sunglasses to have direct darshan with Sri Sri Radha his, as he said himself, his favorite deities. So we go from vision to inspiration to facilitation and we go back to vision. And in this way we keep uh, going around and by this circulating process uh, then we put ourselves in position of being proper leaders. But the basis of being a leader is to be grateful. Srila Prabhupada expressed his gratitude again and again and again uh, to his followers and I'll just read a couple of very brief uh, excerpts from letters and end in this way. 
a letter to Nandarani from 1968. I am very much pleased with your preaching enthusiasm when you say, quote, if people won't come to us here, we will go to them, unquote. And this is the process of preaching, and this is required. I thank you very much for this spirit, just like I have come to your country with the same spirit. So here, Srila Prabhupada is thanking his disciple for her spirit. He wrote to Gargamuni in 1969, Your humble repentance is just like a Vaishnava student. So I thank you very much for this humbleness. Lord Chaitanya taught us to be humbler than the grass on the street and more tolerant than a tree. So these symptoms are Vaishnava symptoms. There is no question of rejection or dejection. I am always at your service, and you can question whenever there is any doubt, and I will try to answer them as far as possible. Here, Srila Prabhupada is appreciating the humility of his disciple, and he's offering him help. He says, whenever you need some guidance, whenever you have some doubt, I am there. So that's very nice. At the end of this verse that we read today, it says, Prithu Maharaj says, Therefore, O my citizens, I thank you. Now, if you look carefully in the Sanskrit of this verse, nowhere does it say, Therefore, O my citizens, I thank you. So I wondered about this. And I looked at some of the commentaries, and I didn't find anything in the commentaries. Often Srila Prabhupada would weave, so to speak, commentary into his translation. And then I realized, this is a case where Srila Prabhupada is responding to inspiration from Krishna. And this is our conviction as we read Srila Prabhupada's books. As Hari Sari Prabhu explained in one lecture, uh, Srila Prabhupada was receiving uh, his, his two sources for his writing, Srimad Bhagavatam, were the commentaries of previous acharyas and his inspiration that he received directly from Krishna. So with, with, with this, you might say, transcendental edition, we understand what is actually going on here? That he is, that Prithu is, is thanking his, uh, his followers, his supporters. So that's something that I would suggest that we want to keep in mind as we go about our duties, uh, acting as little tiny Ishwaras uh, in service of the Supreme Adishwara. Prantaraj Shimad Bhagavatam Ki Thank you. Thank you for your attention. If there's any comment or correction or question. Just a question. Your last comment about Prabhupada's inspiration, how he weaves that into his translation, since your um, service has been, and perhaps I don't know, but continues to be teaching in the academic world, uh, is that explainable to, to scholars, or is that something only that the devotees can really understand? Or maybe it's both. <laughs> or both. Depends who you're speaking with. Yeah. There are many scholars who have a lot of a lot of appreciation, a lot of sympathy, and it's very easy for them to understand. There are others who, uh, whatever you say, they won't understand in this life. <laughs> uh, 
the um, the spirit of uh, Srila Prabhupada in its translation has been appreciated and that's been spoken of by by many scholars going back to A.L. Basham I believe and, and others um, and some who will be in, in a certain sense critical are not they're not inimical they just want to see that what they understand to be scholarship is somehow upheld. So, for example, one scholar I know uh, in Germany uh, was concerned about Srila Prabhupada's use of the word Vedic. Prabhupada uses it in a variety of ways. So he wrote uh, an article in which he analyzed, he spent the time studying Srila Prabhupada's books. He, he analyzed that Oh, he uses the word in three different ways. In a narrower sense, in a kind of medium sense, and a more, more broad sense. Okay, actually, that's, that's useful. We can use that scholarship. We can, we can, um, have a say. Anyway, we can use it. <laughs> it's a new ship. So, it's the time in their terms. In the secular scholarly world, is there um, is there something where if someone knows the mantra, then they're allowed to do that? They know where where Krishna's going with it, so they're allowed to be. I mean, even in their terms, like Krishna says, "By nice to sell my own, they get yelled." Therefore, Prabhupada's knowing that in his kind of Gita translations, he's uh, saying things in verses he's repeating them. It's not necessarily literally there. Is that okay by, by their standards? Again, it depends who you speak to. It depends on what type of scholar, a textual scholar, is likely to say, well, that's stretching things. Um, an anthropologist who's studying our tradition will say, hey, that's part of the tradition. That's, that's thoroughly Puranic. That's what you do with Purana. You... Uh, you recite it with your realization. So, what's the Thank you. <coughs> she said something with the uh, words, Yaga Bhutan, <coughs> the verse means all the demigods are eligible yeah. to accept them as your offerings. That part disappears from the verse. That's not in the verse. Yes. Not in the verse. <laughs> Top of it, Prabhu has just pointed out there's there's a word or a, a compound in the verse, Yagya Bhujan, uh, which doesn't appear in Srila Prabhupada's translation. Sometimes that also happens. <laughs> uh, in this case, Yagya Bhujan. Bhuja means arms, so the, the arms of Yajna, which then, what are the arms? The arms are the demigods. So, uh, apparently Srila Prabhupada didn't feel that that was essential uh, to translate this verse. Where would it fit in if you translate it? would take me a little, it would take me a minute or five to think about that. <laughs> Um, yeah. Who came up with the idea that that only the Shruti are the Vedas and the Smriti are not the Vedas? Isn't that uh, basically a Western idea? It's not according to our tradition. Um, Who came up with the idea that only the Shruti are the Vedas and Smriti are not the Vedas? Smriti, Purana is not the Vedas. To my knowledge, that is not a Western idea. Uh, the idea uh, of um, Orthodox Brahmins which is one component of the 
wider tradition is that Veda means uh, the Vedic Samhita, Rig Samaya Jodhattara, the Brahmanas, each of which are associated with uh, one or one of those Samhitas, the Aramyata, uh, each one associated, and Upanishad. However, our acharyas are very concerned to include Purana as Veda. And in fact, there's an interesting kind of reversal that happens. Scholars have even noticed this, that the Srimad Bhagavatam uh, in what they call the pre-modern period became that which gives authority to other scriptures rather than the other way around. So the Srimad Bhagavatam uh, over time became accepted as actually the essential text. So Nigama Dalpataro Galitam Param Shukamaka Amitadrava Samyutam is very relevant. The Nigama, uh, the, the Veda, uh, the ripened fruit of the tree of, of the religion, that is the Bhagavatam. Uh, and that came to be recognized. But the Orthodox Brahmins, the smartest, they may not exist. Although they are smarta, which means they follow Smriti. <laughs> Very complicated. So, um, one last question. Yes. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Thank you for your wonderful class. You spoke about the uh, importance of being self critical. And could you speak a little bit about the, the art of introspection and how we can actually go within and understand how to be self critical? The art of introspection. That's a whole lecture, if not a seminar in itself. Yes, that's something, huh? One sutra. One sutra. <laughs> One sutra. Don't assume that everything is all right. <laughs> assume rather the opp opposite, that there is danger lurking. And one must be uh, attentive. Yes. That's my sutra. <laughs> Thank you all very much. Shiva Prabhupada.